Welcome to Fun Facts Daily, your source for just the good stuff. Monday through Friday, we're bringing fun facts and news you can use, all carefully curated to uplift and inform. So give yourself a break, relax, and learn something awesome in just a few minutes every day. Hi, everyone. I'm Kyle Wood. Today, we're going to be learning about Albert Einstein, one of history's most brilliant thinkers. But before we get into the facts, let's warm up our brains with a little challenge to see if you can tell fact from fiction. Consider this. It's often said that Albert Einstein was a terrible student, even failing mathematics as a child. What do you think? Is that an actual fact or too good to be true? We'll find out at the end of the episode. Now for your word of the day. Our word for today is relativity. R-E-L-A-T-I-V-I-T-Y. In its simplest terms, relativity means that how you experience time and space depends on how you're moving. Imagine you're standing still and your friend zooms past you in a spaceship at incredibly high speeds. From your perspective, time on your friend's spaceship would actually appear to slow down, and the spaceship itself would appear to shorten in the direction it's traveling. This isn't just a trick of the eye. It's a real physical effect that happens when objects move at speeds closer to the speed of light. To put some concrete numbers behind that, let's say, for example, your friend is on a spaceship traveling 99% of the speed of light. They travel out, let's say, 10 light years away and then come back. On Earth, you would have experienced 20 years passing, but because of the concept known as time dilation, the friend on the spaceship would have experienced much less time. Only 2.82 years would have passed for the friend on the spaceship. Simply put, the faster you go, the slower time passes. As an object approaches the speed of light, time for that object slows down relative to an observer who is stationary or not moving. The term relativity is most commonly associated with Albert Einstein's theories of special and general relativity, which he developed in the early 20th century. While the general idea of things being relative has existed for a long time, Einstein's groundbreaking work provided a mathematical framework and profound insights into how space and time are interconnected and could be influenced by mass and energy. His theories showed that measurements of time and space are not absolute but depend on the relative motion of the observer. Time for your daily high five, our top five fun facts about Albert Einstein. Number one, Albert Einstein could have been the second president of Israel. After the death of Israel's first president, Einstein was offered the role of president by then Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion. This offer shows just the immense respect and admiration Einstein commanded on a global scale, not just for his scientific achievements, but also for his moral standing and intellectual prowess. It was an extraordinary gesture considering Einstein was German-born and had immigrated to the United States, but Albert Einstein politely declined the offer, stating that he lacked the necessary experience and aptitude for such a high-profile political position. He explained that his life's work was in science, specifically in understanding the universe through physics, and he felt ill-equipped to handle the complexities of the head of state. And I think it's a testament to his brilliance that Einstein recognized the limitations of his own knowledge. He was humble enough to realize that being an expert, even a genius in one field, does not mean that he would be the expert and smartest person in the room when it comes to all fields. Number two, Einstein's brain was preserved for scientific study after his death, but without his family's permission. When Albert Einstein passed away in 1955, the pathologist on duty at Princeton Hospital, Thomas Harvey, took the liberty of removing Einstein's brain during the autopsy. 
This was carried out without the direct consent of Einstein's family, although some accounts suggest there was a vague understanding that scientific study might be desirable, just not necessarily in this specific manner. Harvey's motivation was to uncover the unique neurological features that might explain Einstein's extraordinary intelligence. For decades, Harvey held on to the brain, first kept whole and then later sectioned into hundreds of pieces stored in jars of formaldehyde. He even drove across the country with it at one point, hoping to find researchers interested in studying it. Over the years, small portions of the brain were distributed to various neuroscientists for examination, leading to some controversial findings about differences in cell structure and density compared to average brains. Number three, as a Jewish refugee himself, Albert Einstein used his global influence and resources to actively help other refugees escape persecution during World War II. Having experienced firsthand the rise of Nazism and its anti-Semitic policies in Germany, Einstein, who was Jewish, immigrated to the United States in 1933 and became a passionate advocate for those fleeing similar dangers. He understood the desperate plight of individuals and families targeted by the Nazi regime, and he actively worked to secure their safety. His own experience of seeking refuge undoubtedly fueled his dedication to this cause. Einstein leveraged his immense fame and connections to write numerous letters of recommendation, affidavits, and appeals to U.S. government officials, universities, and private organizations on behalf of European scientists, intellectuals, and ordinary citizens seeking asylum. He also contributed financially to relief efforts and used his platforms to speak out against the atrocities of war and the need for humanitarian aid. His efforts provided crucial assistance and hope to many during one of history's darkest periods, demonstrating his deep commitment to human rights and compassion. Number four, Einstein was an accomplished violinist and believed music helped him think about physics. Beyond his scientific brilliance, Albert Einstein had a lifelong passion for music, particularly playing the violin, which he started learning at the age of six. He often referred to his violin as Lena and would play it regularly, finding it to be a source of relaxation and inspiration. Music was not just a hobby for him. He considered it an integral part of his creative process, believing that it helped him in his scientific endeavors. He famously said, quote, If I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician, end quote. Einstein often turned to music when grappling with complex scientific problems, finding that the melodies and harmonies helped to clear his mind and open up new pathways for thought. He would play Mozart and Bach, believing that their intricate structures mirrored the elegance and order he sought to uncover in the laws of the universe. And our fifth and final fun fact for today, Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, has come to be universally recognized as a symbol of a brilliant idea, even by those who don't necessarily understand its scientific implications. The equation E equals mc squared summarizes the relationship between energy, mass, and the speed of light. E is for energy, m is for mass, and c is for the speed of light. It states that energy and mass are interchangeable and can be converted into each other, with the speed of light squared acting as the conversion factor. This elegant equation, part of his theory of special relativity, revolutionized physics by demonstrating that mass is a form of energy and vice versa, laying the groundwork for understanding nuclear power and the energy released by atomic reactions. Despite its profound scientific implications, E equals mc squared has transcended the realm of pure science to become a cultural symbol. It's instantly recognizable even for those without a physics background, appearing in popular culture, advertising, and everyday conversation as a symbol of genius and complex scientific thought. If you pay attention, you may start to notice it written on the blackboard in the background of sitcoms and movies in graphics for slide presentations, on t-shirts, water bottles, and pencil cases, all sorts of contexts that have really nothing to do with calculating energy, mass, or the speed of light. 
E equals MC squared is a formula that not only shows the tremendous amounts of energy that can be released by splitting atoms, it has come to represent the tremendous potential of human intellect. Now for some news you can use. When you're trying to understand a complex concept like Einstein's theories or anything else, try to break it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. Instead of trying to grasp the entire theory of relativity at once, focus on one aspect, like the idea that time can slow down or that mass can be converted into energy. This chunking method makes overwhelming information feel less daunting and allows your brain to process and integrate new knowledge more effectively. Another helpful tip is to connect new information to something you already know. For instance, if you're learning about the speed of light, think about how light behaves in everyday life, like how shadows are formed or how light travels through a prism. Creating these mental links strengthens your understanding and makes the new information more memorable. Building this mental bridge from what you already know to what you want to learn will make the journey much smoother. Now for the moment you've been waiting for. At the beginning of the episode, I asked, do you think it's true that Albert Einstein was a terrible student and failed math? Well, while it seems like an inspiring anecdote, it's unfortunately a fallacy. It's one of the most common myths about Albert Einstein. In reality, Einstein was an excellent student in math and physics, even from a young age. While he may have struggled in some subjects he found uninteresting, he was said to not particularly care for the traditional schooling methods and rote memorization, he certainly excelled in math. By the age of 15, he had already mastered differential and integral calculus. The myth of Einstein failing math likely originated from a misunderstanding of the grading system in Switzerland where he attended school. Their system was sometimes the inverse of the German system, meaning that a 1 was the best grade, not the worst. So any low numbers on his report cards were actually a sign of his brilliance. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about Albert Einstein with me today. Be sure to tune in every weekday for even more fun facts. Fun Facts Daily is an Airwave Media podcast. It was written, recorded, mixed, and edited by me, Kyle Wood. Thanks for sharing a part of your day with me. Be sure to follow Fun Facts Daily on your favorite podcast app so you can keep the good stuff coming your way every day. And if you like the show, please do me a favor and leave a kind rating, review, or just tell your friends about it. 